So this section is uh, titled as Evolved Packet Core uh, or EPC uh, as it's also known. In this uh, section, we are going to review the different network elements uh, within the EPC. Uh, we are going to take into uh, account uh, each of those network elements and analyze what functions and roles they play uh, to deliver LT service to a subscriber uh, that is connected to the LT network. So the first network element we are going to be talking about is called the Mobility Management Entity, uh, also known as the MME. Um, as you can see here, we have the same picture from the previous section. Um, I've highlighted the EPC portion and uh, MME is uh, located right here. Uh, as you can see, the MME is connected to the E node Bs uh, and is also connected to the home subscription server, HSS, and also to the serving gateway, SGW. The MME plays a, a really key role in uh, delivering LT service uh, to a subscriber and it's a sort of uh, uh, like a, a, a mediator um, uh, in the EPC and, and uh, plays a very uh, principal role in coordinating the, uh, the traffic uh, setup uh, for LT subscriber. Uh, here I've listed uh, some of the functions that the MME um, is responsible for and we are going to take um, a deep dive into each of these uh, fairly um, soon here. Um, but I just wanted to point one thing out um, before we go down that route uh, is that uh, you, you may notice uh, that we have um, uh, connections from the MME out to these different network elements. These connections are represented as a broken or dotted uh, connections. Um, what that means is the, these are actually control plane connections rather than user plane uh, connections. So just keep in mind that uh, the MME is, uh, is more of a, a control plane uh, network entity rather than a user plane network entity. But like we talked, uh, you know, in the previous section, you one uh, before a UE can get service, they need to go through uh, a bunch of signaling uh, before uh, getting data. So um, that that is uh, that's why MME is really important, where it because it handles a lot of the control plane functionality. Okay. Now going through the down this list here, uh, the first is a NAS signaling and its security. So before we uh, you know, kind of elaborate more here. Let's uh, first understand what is NAS and uh, what is uh, uh, what, what it represents. So in LT, there are two kinds of protocols. There is the NAS protocol uh, suite, and then there is the AS uh, or Access Stratum protocol suite. So non-Access Stratum and Access Stratum. A uh, good way to remember the difference between these is that uh, the NAS uh, access stratum protocols are the products uh, refers to the suite of protocols that run between uh, the UE and the MME uh, and they are uh, they, they are at the NAS layer uh, whereas the access stratum suite of protocols are protocols that run between uh, the UE and the E node B so uh, the MME is responsible for all the NAS signaling uh, and its security. So security again is is um, a key aspect in LTE, and the MME is responsible for uh, maintaining uh, the encryption and integrity of NAS signaling um, to the UE um, um, and um, from the UE. Uh, Another key aspect uh, that the MME is involved in is called the tracking area list management. So tracking area, first let's understand what tracking areas are. Um, tracking areas are zones that we typically define in our um, uh, UTRAN. Uh, and uh, let's try to understand it with a, uh, with a good example here. So say you are a network operator and uh, you have, uh, you know, say 100 E node Bs that you have deployed. Now, those 100 E node Bs, uh, would, you know, would appear like, you know, there would be like, um, you know, over here in this picture, we just show two for the sake of simplicity. 
but you can have more than two here so say you had 100 and your subscribers you know would be distributed among those 100 e node bees because uh, uh, not all people are at the same place right so now um, in order to um, in order to um, deliver effective service to your subscribers um, there is some optimization that you can do on the core side and um, one of the optimizations that you can do is uh, you can divide those 100 e node bees into zones uh, or tracking areas and then you uh, you use each tracking area as a zone uh, and um, and this really comes into picture when you are uh, trying to target users that are in idle mode so uh, say we'll we'll give you another example so say you uh, have a lt subscriber that is currently not doing actively doing data and they are just you know uh, camping uh, on a cell uh, and there is an incoming uh, video call so if there is an incoming video call before that call can be delivered um, to the subscriber here for example um, the ue has, is required to wake up and establish a control signaling path um, to the mme and also to the um, uh, and also we need to set up bearers uh, to the sgw so in in order to wake up the ue there is a mechanism that happens which is called paging where the e node b uh, sends a message uh, to the ue uh, asking it to wake up and get connected to the network now this pa paging is is again a responsibility of the mme and um, so is also a responsibility of the mme so now we, we in, in the a uh, couple of minutes back we talked about tracking areas right as, as zones now the mme for idle mode subscribers keeps track of which zone a given ue was uh, present last time when it was active and it's able to use that zone ID or tracking area ID to page the E node bees within that tracking area ID. So you may ask what the advantage is here. The advantage here is uh, that instead of paging all the 100 E node bees uh, and uh, creating a lot of signaling, the MME based on the tracking area ID of the last known uh, location of the ue is able to zoom in and uh, only page on the e node b that it needs to thereby um, making the signaling traffic less uh, which you know puts less strain on your network and you can use uh, uh, that extra resources for better customer experience rather than a lot of signaling so that's uh, that's the that's the idea behind tracking areas and uh, all that management takes place in the MME. Uh, the PDN gateway selection and SGW selection, this also happens by the MME. So when a subscriber attaches um, to the MME, uh, the MME uses a certain logic to figure out which SGW and which P gateway uh, that the subscriber will attach to. And uh, uh, th there is uh, some logic that... Uh, uh, it uses to figure out, uh, you know, which of these network elements to use, because in a in a in a, a production network, um, chances are you would have more than one of these boxes, and uh, you would want to do um, some sort of um, distribution of traffic, uh, because you don't want to keep all your uh, traffic on one of these boxes uh, for the sake of redundancy, or uh, also for uh, you know load balancing um, and those kind of things uh, roaming and authentication so the MME um, works uh, in tight coordination with the HSS for all the authentication uh, um, of the subscribers and um, um, and uh, the way it does that is you know whenever you is um, when a UE attaches to the MME the MME reaches out to the HSS, uh, grabs a bunch of security information and is able to authenticate the subscriber based on that. 
um, for roaming when we look at the roaming uh, when we look at the roaming architecture later in the course um, we'll talk about how MME plays a role in uh, roaming uh, EPS better management so uh, EPS better management uh, is also one of the key aspects uh, or responsibilities of the MME uh, like I said in the beginning MME is sort of like uh, a really uh, controller uh, in uh, in the EPC, as it as it manages uh, setup of all the connections uh, initially and uh, modifications and you know uh, release of connections, so all that better management happens uh, in the MME as well. Uh, signaling for mobility management uh, between 3GPP RANs. So, so a good example would be say there's a network operator and they only have LTE deployed say in 50% of their market. So 50% we have uh, LTE, the other 50% may be, say, something like 3G, you know, UMTS, uh, wideband CDMA. And their subscribers are going to move, you know, uh, throughout the network uh, operator's area. And you you always want them to have a good customer experience, right? They don't care whether they are on LTE versus uh, wideband CDMA or UMTS. Um, so in order to make that customer experience happen in a good way, uh, there uh, you can um, interconnect your uh, 4G and 3G networks and your users can hand over between both of them depending on the region they are in and the MME is responsible for coordinating these handovers 